And, well, more news for Canton Police. I don't know if people are aware of this, but this is from about a month ago. This is Boston 25 News reported on this, but there really wasn't any more mention of it anywhere else that I have seen, and I've looked quite a bit. So what happened was the chief of police for Canton <sighs> struck an old man down, a pedestrian who was wearing a vest, a reflector vest, of all things, as he's crossing a crosswalk. An old man walking with a cane. The police chief turned, I guess, the corner, and she blamed the poor lighting. She blamed his reflector vest. Um, she did immediately get out of the car and um, call 911 and try to offer assistance. And he had many bones broken and had to have surgery. He was very seriously injured. She was given a ticket. She was given a ticket for failure to yield to a pedestrian. So I'm just like, is it not a, is it not a crime though? Like if you have serious bottle injuries like that, and he's old too, so recovery from an older person is even harder, you know, from broken, bo broken bones. The, his attorney for the, uh, the uh, pedestrian said he's got a long road of recovery ahead. Um, but what if she'd killed him? Would it have been a ticket then? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I haven't looked up the statute yet. Like, what is the statute? Were you failure to yield a pedestrian and you cause serious injuries and it's just a traffic ticket? Like, a new full traffic ticket. Um, that was the Rhythm Police. Now, she did offer to do a breathalyzer, which was zero. But did they, did they do... I mean, since you're going to offer up a breathalyzer, shouldn't you do a drug test as well? Because you're not going to catch drugs on a breathalyzer. I'm not accusing her of doing drugs. I'm just saying. And then in the end of this video, she they she regrets with, you know, everything going on with this case. She's regretful that basically that because of all the scrutiny that Canton is now under because of the Karen Reed case, she does regret not revealing the incident sooner. So this this is this is the same it, now I may be wrong but it may I believe this is the same chief of police that lives across the street from where John O'Keefe was found dying and it it was said that there's a a chief of police that lives across the street from that house and saw nothing out of the ordinary Nobody driving around in the yard, running people over. No Fort Edge sitting in the yard. No person dropping somebody, you know, dumping them in the yard. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, but um, anyways, I don't know if that's the same chief of police that was, you know, back in 2022, you know, um, we're two years later. But it's just the idea, though, that she gets a ticket, a traffic ticket. It's almost like ominous that this happens during, during the Karen Reed trial, where they're trying to pin a tail light that is seen in a video is clearly not broken after hours, hours after she dropped off John O'Keefe, and that's seen in a video. That 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 that, that SUV did not have a missing tail light. And you can go visit, in, you know, the interviews that shows that video. And, and so, so they're trying to frame a woman and claim that there was, there was a busted out taillight with missing, with footprints in her driveway, clearly showing somebody was at her taillight at 6.30 a.m. And then they make this pretend visit to the house to pretend that they need to be there when there's no kids there. Everybody picked up their kids and there was nobody asked them to go to the house. Nobody made any concern for kids. They knew that they had picked up those kids, but they made a, pre -show, a pretend show to go to the house so they can say, look, we saw in a video later that that, that taillight was missing in her driveway. But they didn't know at that time when they did that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you not know that she has a video shown very clearly several hours later? 
that there was no busted tail light. There was no missing tail light. There was no missing tail light several hours after she dropped him off. So here, here's the same chief of police, okay, that's over these cops who are sitting on the stand lying, like Sergeant Link, like day seven, says, I, I don't know what those guys' version of who, who, you know, there was a fight, you know, a few years back. I don't know what their version was. And he had got sued over their version. The same police chief who is governing those lying on the stand, she runs over a pedestrian, an old man walking with the cane, wearing a reflective vest, and hid that from the public. And this all instead was get a little bit of media coverage. How come this isn't national news? How come? Oh my gosh. And I'm not, you know what? I'm not like saying that she should have been prosecuted. I'm just like, it's kind of concerning that if somebody can run you down and almost kill you. I'm not saying he almost died, but what if somebody almost kills you and you're going to get a ticket? A traffic ticket. She caused very serious injuries for this man. And she got a ticket for failure to yield to a pedestrian. Is there no statute in the state of Massachusetts that if you if you mow down a pedestrian for failure to yield to one and you cause serious injuries, that it's at least a misdemeanor? I think people in Massachusetts should be afraid. Because if there's no consequences when you are neglectful to... uh you know, yield to a pedestrian, you mow somebody down, there's no fear of prosecution. I think people should be afraid. I think they should be very afraid in Massachusetts. But if there is a statute that says, if you get cited for failure to yield to a pedestrian and they just happen to have very serious injuries, I'm sorry, that's at least a misdemeanor. I'm just like, what in tarnation? But the irony of this happening to the Canton Chief of police during Karen Reed's trial. I'm just saying, what do you think? <laughs> oh my goodness.